Well, I'm almost done with the AL East on the Toronto Blue Jays 2024 hitting preview. I'm Sean Childs at fantasyanalyst.substat.com. I'm working my way through the player pool, trying to get a feel for the inventory as I prepare for the the high stakes market in March. And I hope it helps you a little bit. Um, kind of new to this, and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I got a report from one of my uh, things that is boring, and I got to be more entertaining. But there's a fine line here. I want to try to buzz through this and see what happens. So let's go. Uh, as far as the uh, Blue Jays, I'm, I'm one of the better teams in the AL uh, East over the uh, the last four season. You know, three trips to the postseason. Um, their last division title, 2015, and they won the World Series in 1992 and 1993, but then they missed the postseason for 21 consecutive years. Kind of interesting. Um, they ranked last year third in the AL in ERA. Uh, their bullpen had a 3.68 ERA, uh, finishing eight, 33 wins, 24 losses, 51 saves, 800, I mean, 606 strikeouts over 50, 557 innings. Um, their offense really kind of underachieved, and when you're – even when you're looking at the the lineup this year, it's just not where it needs to be to be a top contender, especially in the uh, the AL. Um, I'll switch this thing. Sorry, I'll do the slide thing. Sorry, um, I'm going to add this. Just sorry, I'm breaking off here. Um, one more, I'll go back. I'm not quite where there, so uh, get my face out of there, anyways. So, uh, so their offense isn't where it needs to be. Um, they finished 14th in runs, 746. 17th in home runs, 188, and 17th in RBI, 705. They only stole 99 bases, success rate around uh, 75%. Um, in the offseason, they lost Brandon Belt, Matt Chapman, uh, Whit Merrifield, um, and um, uh, Hujin Ray, Hyjin Ryu um, didn't return. They signed Jordan Hicks, a uh, pitcher, you know, starter, maybe the bullpen, you know, nice arm, but um, we'll see where he is. And Isaiah kind of falafa uh, as a utility guy. So right now, um, the structure offense looks kind of kind of messy. Uh, the top three couple of players, um, um, Bo Bichette, Vlad Guerrero, and then George Springer, and maybe even Dalton Varsho are, uh, the, you know, the foundation of the team. But the depth, depth of the offense looks questionable. So I expect, expect them to sign a bat or two if they want to push higher. Their pitching was really, really good. The top four starters were um, gave them 742 um, good innings. Uh, but their ace, uh, Alex Manoa, or their expected ace, you know, really was a top five pitcher in baseball the year before. But last year he was, he was the, probably the worst starting pitcher in Major League Baseball. And the way it was handled in the summer by him, I thought it was kind of out of line. And they still have a really good closer. So, We'll move on to the starting lineup. Um, so George Springer um, came through the Astro system, pretty nice player, uh, played pretty well um, 2022, missed 29 games, but he still was the 30th best uh, uh, player by fancy points gain score in my system, gained 3.99. Um, over the previous two years, um, before last year, he, he's, he missed 113 games. So injuries were a problem. Um, last year, he he had his most at bats since uh, 2016, 613, which really should have would have thought would have been a really productive year. 87 runs, down two from the year before, with a drop in the bats, four less home runs, four less RBIs, and he did steal uh, 20 bases. So the last two years, he stole 34 bags, really an uptick in steals, and, it, and it's something that was in his profile early in his career, um, just didn't really show. Um, his average hit rate is trending down. Um, last year, 1.570, well below his years, uh, his peak years, where were over a 2.0 when you was uh, you saw a guy that you thought would hit 30 plus home runs. Uh, 2019, he hit 39. Uh, so it was kind of disappointing there. His his RBI rate was low, 13 uh, percent last year compared to you know 16 and 17, which was a more uh, middle of the order bat. Um, you know. But he did come to the plate, even, you know, batting at the top of the lineup uh, four and five times. So that was pretty good. Um, walk rate, 8.8. .8, still an asset, but it's, you know, declining. You know, it's not where it was, and, and he has a favorable strikeout. Um, didn't really play that well against lefties. It hit uh, 242 over 124 bats, four home runs, 14 RBIs. Um, 
struggled in April and July in both months. Um, he had the hottest, the lowest hard hit rate um, of his career and exit velocity. His hard hit rate was 39.9, exit velocity 88.3. So kind of both going back up. Um, and his fly ball rate is also trending lower um, with a, along with his home run fly ball rate, which 12.1 and his launch angle was only 12. So at eight, he's at, he's 34 years old. So it looks like he's kind of, you know, going in the wrong direction. He's still a, a talented player. If he stays healthy, if the Toronto Blue Jays starting lineup improves, um, he, he could, you know, give obviously, uh, you know, help in all five, uh, all four categories and batting average should be close to the league, uh, league average, especially with a little bit, uptick in um, hard hit rate or exit velocity. So uh, his ADP uh, 123 is the 71st hitter. So when, you know, last year, last year, his results, he was the uh, 54th ranked hitter. So that was, he's still, he's kind of a value based on, on what it was. I don't trust his speed because, you know, he's stealing 20 bases at age 33. So that could go back and that that's going to, you know, probably put him in a range where he's get drafted. So steady veteran, um, but you know, at his price point, I'm not sure that, uh, he's a difference maker, you know, or somebody that will, you know, reach a higher ceiling or one that we hope for, uh, Bo Bouchette really was one of the best players in baseball, um, for a couple of seasons, 2021, he was the second most valuable player by fantasy, uh, points gain score. Um, you gain, if you had him on your team, you gain 9.59, uh, points in the standings because he, you know, he had 121 runs, 29 home runs, 102 RBI, stole 25 bases, really, and, and hit 298, really a five, uh, you know, five category guy. Um, Trey Turner is the only one that beat him that season. Um, he, le he led the American League in hits in back-to-back -back seasons, 191, 189. Um, but the following season, he, he, uh, he wasn't quite the same player in 2022, so he dropped to 18th. Um, and that was probably a big part of it was he only stole 13 bases, which you, you thought he would consistently steal over 20, especially a, a guy at a young age and with that with a lot of at-bats. So last year, um, heading into the high stakes market in late March in, in the National Fantasy Baseball Championship, he was kind of the buzz guy. He was going, he was going like pick nine or sometimes higher. Somebody was some people were taking him as um, you know, the difference maker shortstop. I was a Bobby Witt guy. And I wanted him, so I only ended up with Bichette on one team. My good friend uh, Jeff Dawson of East Coast Sports and Better Bester wanted Bich uh, uh, Bichette. We had pick nine, and we gave up Wit, which probably ended up being bad. But the rest of the team didn't work out. But anyways, so over his first 63 games last year, he actually was on track. He hit 331, 36 runs, 14 home runs. I mean, yeah, 14 home runs, 42 RBIs, 269 bats. Um, the only thing that was, you know, that wasn't there, he only had three steals and six attempts, which is really disappointing considering the change of rules. You figure he would have a rebound of his 13 steals, um, but there was something going on there. Um, over his next 180 at bats, he hit 306, you know, pr pretty good. Um, but he only took seven walks, but his all his production was terrible. 14 runs, three home runs, 17 RBI. So he was really killing teams. Um, he had a knee injury in late July, a quad issue, uh, and, and a quad issue later. And uh, he ended up going on the DL for uh, twice. Um, but over the end, uh, last 122 at-bats, he only had 254, 19 runs, three homers, 14 RBIs, and two stolen bases. So, you know, was it the knee? Was there a lingering injury, something behind the scenes that was really kind of holding him back? You know, so that – so. For, uh, you know, realistically, 260 bats, you could say almost half the season, even though it was only two months, um, uh, he, he was a pretty good player. So um, his contact batting average, 384, fell right in range with us four years in the majors. He's been, you know, you know, four full seasons, or last three seasons in the majors. Anyway, 385, 380, 380, 384. So when he puts the ball in play, he hits for high batting average. That's a really, really good number. He doesn't strike out a lot. A lot you know, less than the league average, 19.1% for his career, but his walk rate um, did have some regression, which was 4.5. So he was a little more impatient at the plate. Really good RBI rate last year, but he only had, the year before he had 425 RBIs. He had his only last year, 324. 
and he had what 81 less at bat. So he his opportunity was a lot of that, but his RBI rate 22, 19, 17, 17. He's really, you know, probably the third should be like the third hitter in this lineup, especially if he's not going to run more. And Toronto's got to find somebody else to bounce up, maybe hit second uh, or lead off and move Springer down as well and put Vlad back in cleanup. But for now, I just put, um, you know, put the best players in Bichette's hitting second. Um, and his, his uh, average hit rate is, it was when he came out of the minors or in 2019 and 2020, it was 1.83, 1.70. The, the last few years, 1.62, 1.61, 1. 1. Uh, you know, 5.5 5 roughly. So it's kind of going in the wrong direction for somebody that you want to push higher in power. Um, his exit velocity, 90 and hard hit rate were lower than 2022. Um, it was 91 and 50, 50, uh, 50% hard hit rate was, was excellent the year before. Um, he had the worst, um, his worst launch angle of his career, 6.2. And his fly ball rate was also the lowest, 26.5%. Um, but he did barrel 44 balls, which really fell in line with his two previous seasons. So when he barrels them, he has a chance at home runs. It was 9.6%. So that's kind of an interesting number because he had less of bats last year and it was almost identical. So when he hit the 29 home runs, 24. Um, so there's, if he just has a little rebound and hard hit rate, um, the power should naturally go forward and he, hopefully he has a little better launch angle. But his ADP, 39. Goes, it's in the third round of 15 team draft, uh, early fourth round in the um, 12 teamer. It, it really looked to me, it looks like a buy in opportunity. I don't love the structure of the Blue Jays um, lineup right now as I, you know, walk my way through it. But, um, and I, I'm not 100% sure, you know, last year was the knee the reason why he didn't steal? Was it a factor late in the year why, his, you know, some of the stats went good backwards? So hopefully he didn't have surgery. So ho over the winter, hopefully he can clean up that stuff. But he's a guy that should hit over 300, get 100 runs, 25 home runs, 100 RBIs. I'm only going to put him down for 10 steals until he shows a little bit more, but his potential to be there. So where he goes in the draft, I think he's an excellent buy, uh, especially when he, if somebody's going to take an ace early. And he run, it reminds me of, of a Mookie Betts a couple of years ago. People kind of faded him. Um, late in the first round and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, he had a nice bounce back here. So Bichette is a player of interest for sure. Next up, Vlad Guerrero. Monster season in 2001, 123 runs, 48 home runs, 111 RBIs. Um, he came to the plate with 408 base run, runners on base. Last year, he came to the base with four, 433 runners on base, but he only had 94 RBIs, 14, 419 the year before. Um, his RBI rate over the last three years, 15, 15, and 16 just isn't where you want to be for that type of guy. You figure maybe he could be like an 18 to 20 percent guy. Um, but, you know, he's uh, th there's a lot to like because he hit 300 last year. But over the last two years, he's drifted backwards. Um, in 2022, you know, he's supposed to be in the best shape of his career. He had a little bump in steals, uh, eight. His average hit rate was 1.749, which Made him a 30 home run hitter, and, and he did achieve that total, but he had 638 at bats. Um, his contact batting average um, really dipped from the previous year, 335, 381 in his best year. And even last year, it dropped at like 317, so that was kind of a problem. Um, in 2020, uh, he, I'm sorry, 2022, he finished 20th in um, – Fancy points, uh, fancy points gain score, and then he ranked really high in two, uh, third in 2021. Um, but last year, a further, like I said, a further slide in his contact batting average, average hit rate drifted backwards. Um, exit velocity um, was uh, 92.1, 24th hard hit rate, 49.2, 36th. But it fell below his previous season, you know, high of 2021 when he was 95.1 and 55.2. So those are really, really good numbers. His um, launch angle did improve 10.5. Fly ball rate improved a little bit, 35.4. But his um, his uh, home run fly ball rate was actually the lowest of his career, 14.5. So um, that was really kind of disappointing. He started in April. He had three, uh, 309 with five home runs, 15 RBIs, a couple steals, over 110 at bats. But for the rest of the year, he had 260, under 260 or lower in every other month. Um, really, and he was really 
really disappointing after the all-star break. He had um, 251, 13 home runs, 36 RBIs, 259 at-bats. Um, struggled. He hasn't figured out lefties. He should be really kind of pounding them. You would think he had two home runs and nine RBIs over 102 at-bats. It's not where you want him to see. On the positive side, his strikeout rate, really, really good for a power hit of 14.7, walk rate 9.8. So when you're looking at Vlad, is like, you know, is he a monster? You know, is he going to return to form? Can he can he push that, you know, that launch angle a little bit higher to kind of get to where, you know, he was in 2021? And I, I think that he's the type of player that you want to gamble on, um, you know, especially if, in, in, like I said, ideally, I like to see the lineup a little bit, bit better in front of him and behind him. But, you know, his ADP is 35 right in that same area of, um, uh, of Bo Bichette. And a couple of years ago, the Blue Jays were one of the better offenses. So last year they were disappointing. Um, they need to be better all around. And um, so I would I would take his 2022 season, 90 runs, 32 home runs and 97. If he at his pr price point and be happy with it and hope for a, like an uptick in batting average or even a better swing path. Um, so I'm definitely interested in uh, Vlad this year, depending on my st structure. And I wouldn't I wouldn't. I wouldn't be against taking Bo and uh, Vlad on the on the two three turn in a 50 te 15 team draft uh, league because you can you can stack them together and if they come together and the offense is better in Toronto they could really be explode explosive. The trick is if you do that you most likely took a bat early and uh, you know you're kind of chasing the pitching so uh, probably a better structure if you had an ace up front. But anyways, next up Vlad uh, uh, Dalton Varsho. He no longer qualifies at catcher. So that's kind of a major strike to his fantasy value. I was on him a couple, two years ago. Um, he worked out pretty well for a catcher. Um, I think he finished um, as a second rate catcher in 2022. Um, you know, he had 531 at bats, was kind of an advantage at the position. Um, but, you know, in that 2022 season, he was really the same player that he was the second half in 2021. He just didn't get the opportunity. Uh, pretty good when he was a catcher. You're getting you were getting 16 steals, and the runs and RBIs were competitive, and home runs were really really great. Um, but last year, just wasn't the same player. Um, and you know his his contact batting average dropped to 296. So that's that was below like 30. You know, two 324, 323. Uh, there were two previous seasons. His average hit rate stayed in a range where you would think that he could hit. 30 home runs, 1.76, 1.767. If you get 550 at bats, will he play him every day in Toronto center field or in the outfield? I'm not 100% sure, but he he didn't catch one game last year, so he need for him to be have a spike in value for fantasy. If he could cut, you know, uh, see time at catcher, and that would mean Toronto's one of their other catchers most likely would have to get hurt. So, um, so when you compare him to the outfield. It's a whole different ballpark. Um, he uh, last year he struggled against righties, 202. He did hit 20 home runs, um, and he, he he surprisingly he didn't have much. Only one home run over 106 at bats against lefties, but he did hit 296. So it was enough there where he shouldn't be. He should be in the lineup. The strikeout rate closer to the league average, 23.2. Walk rate. 7.8, little below league average. Um, exit velocity doesn't stand out, 87.8. Hard hit rate, 36.1, 281st, nothing special there. He does have a high, he did have a high high launch angle last year, 20.5. Fly ball rate, 47.2. So he gets the ball in the air um, and he can uh, power it. I put him as a cleanup hitter, but he's not really, he doesn't fit the profile. I just was trying to get through the Blue Jays lineup because the rest of the behind him is really kind of sketchy as far as options of where they would hit in the lineup. So I don't believe there, especially when you add in his RBA rate, it was only 11% last year. Pretty good the year before, 17%. And then last year, even um, Varsho came to the plate with 397 runners on base, which is a pretty good number, but he only had 61 RBIs. Really disappointing uh, to see that. So he's a guy that can be a 2015 guy, guy with some batting average risk, maybe a 240 hitter with a rebounding contact batting average. His ADP is 211, uh, put, uh, you know, falls in range with what he did. Um, but, you know, he's just a steady player. And, you know, the, the key to his success is where he hits in the lineup. And can he get that batting average up a little bit? Um, but he does have 30 home run power. 
if uh, he did get enough at bat. Uh, next up, um, Alejandro Kirk. Um, two years ago, he was one of those uh, people that drafted him in auctions for like $12, $13, or used him as a cheat second catcher. And he was really, not, I wouldn't say a difference maker, but he was a winning selection. He, you know, he's had 59 runs for catcher. So they, you know, beat, beat the catcher twos and a lot of them hit 285, 14 home runs, 63 RBIs, which were just steady stats. And he had actually had more walks than um, 60, uh, more walks than strikeouts, 63 to 58. So his profile in 2022 looked really, really good. Um, but in two, um but last year, um, he just wasn't the same player. The um, strikeout rate remains strong, 10.7. Walk rate, 11.7. That was in 2022, sorry. Uh, but last year, um, his contact batting average dropped to uh, 284. And he's, he's, a, he's a really, really big guy for a catcher. Um, weighs in at what is he, 245 for 5'8". So he's kind of a big guy. Hits a lot of ground balls. So, you, you know. The ground balls, you know, they get to the infielders. They're going to be easy outs. Um, it kind of restricts his home runs. His fly ball rate, home run fly ball rate was only 8.1, around 10 the year before. Um, you know, just when you're looking at his profile, he had, he's going to most likely can't be a difference maker in runs just because of his speed. His batting average slits to 250 because of the contact batting average, but that should rebound a little bit. And his minor league resume suggests that he should hit for a higher average. Um, but his uh, his exit velocity last year was 87.5 compared to 90.5 the previous season. Hard hit rate was way off, 38.3. It was 45.4. So was was there something going on with his approach? You know, worse shape, which he, he's never been in great shape. His average hit rate's declining 1.43. The year before was 1.45. It just really doesn't support a 20 home run hitter. So you know, maybe, a, uh, you know, the, the goal with him is if he could hit 270, score 50 runs, 12 home runs, 50, 50 RBIs, uh, that would be a decent profile for a catcher, too. His ADP is 267, 23rd catcher off the board, kind of fits that mid-range. And there's always a chance he could uh, uh, improve. So I'm, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm going to target him, but, you know, I have to pay attention because if he slides, depending where he goes, and he and he and he doesn't and he has to see some time at DH and in in, in Toronto does have another catcher and I have both catchers listed in the lineup until they sign another bat. But the playing time is is somewhat of a concern because of um, you know um, the other catcher on the team. So the next batter up is um, Davis Schneider. Um, he's a he's a player that uh, Toronto picked up in the twenty eighth round in two thousand seventeen. Really kind of over his 245 games, he hit 239, unimpressive. He home runs 30, 129 runs, 123 RBIs, 14 steals, over 800 bats. So you figure that was um you know 550 at bats, and maybe maybe be like an 80, 20, 80, maybe like a seven or eight guy at stolen bases. Walk rate top of the order, 14.3. So that was pretty good, but he struck out 26.3 percent of the time. So that was probably tied to the batting average risk. Um, he really started to kind of show some growth in 2022 at double A AA and triple A. Uh, hit 275 or 222 at bats, 39 runs, um, nine home runs, 32 RBIs, and 10 steals. Last season, he repeated his batting average from the previous year, 275 at triple A over 309 at bats. But uh, And he had a little more pop. Uh, you know, he had 61 runs, 21 home runs. 64 RBIs and nine steals over short at bats. That's pretty impressive. Um, the Blue Jays called him up in early August, and he kind of put his name on the fantasy radar right out of the gate. He went 12 for 13 in his first three games, three runs, two homers, five RBIs. Um, unfortunately, he only hit 223 over his last 103 at bats, um, but he did still stay productive. 20 runs, six home runs, 15 RBIs, one steal. Walk rate stayed on par, 14.9 with Toronto. That was a plus, but he whiffed 30.5% of the time. So that's a little bit of risk. Um, he has a fly ball swing pass, so that kind of leads to some easier outs as well. 14.8% in AAA last year and 15.2, I'm sorry, 52.1 in the majors. Um, his, in his home run high, um, 
fly ball rate last year was the best of his career uh, with with Toronto, 21.71, which is probably a little out of line. Um, had a massive launch angle too with blue, with Toronto Blue or with the Blue Jays, 26%. That's probably not repeatable. Um, he was actually he was his, he was at his best against lefties, 326, six home runs, 10 RBIs, over only 43 at bat. So um, I think he overachieved um, last year um, in power and batting average, um, probably with Toronto um, because of the strikeout rate. So I look for a little bit of regression there. Um, he kind of has a wide range of outcomes for me this year. His ADP 418 is probably um, lower than it would would be if he actually had the starting second base job. Um, does his, you know, does he when he's playing well, does he get to the top of the lineup because of his walk rate and he's putting the ball in play? If he's striking out, <coughs> he could be at the bottom of the lineup. But um, so for now, he's kind of a play stoler. Kind of think of him as a fourth category guy, not a ton of speed, but. Um, he could help if he got 450 at, at bats, potentially in like an AL only league and maybe a kind of a flash player in a 15 team league. Probably not um, not a guy that you're going to chase after in a um, 12 teamer unless he really, really caught fire and he kind of got that strikeout rate under control. Uh, Kevin Biggio is one of those uh, the sons of a major league player came along with um Bo Bichette and Vlad and, and he, he's he's the player that's been kind of trailing um as far as getting playing time and, and being a productive player in the major leagues um in 2019 he looked like he was going to be better he only had 234 but he had 66 runs 16 home runs and 48 RBIs and 14 steals over 354 at bats so you thought that in the following season that if he got a full-time job he could be like a 2020 type of guy, a little bit, bit batting average risk. His RBI rate was pretty good. The average hit rate was, you know, gave him 30 run, 30 home run upside. Um, but, you know, over the next uh, three seasons, he just hasn't been the same player. He's been in a par, um, kind of part-time role. Um, he had um, 227 uh, with 30 home runs, 119 RBIs, 16 steals, over 1,000. 16 at bats um but last year he did set career highs in almost all categories so that was positive um but you know um i'm sorry he career highs over the last three years so he, not the career i'm sorry I probably need to backtrack how i wrote that so uh biggio saw his strikeout rate improved slightly 26 percent still uh out of line his walk rate tends to be in the range where he could hit top of the order but he doesn't put the um hit for high enough average in 11.8 last year, 13.9 in a career. He's actually already been okay against lefties, better than expected, 241, five home runs, 37 RBIs over at 332 at bats. <coughs> Sorry, my voice is getting dry from talking too much. Give me a second here. Um, after the All-Star break, he actually um, looked like he was a better player last year. He had 272. Over 147 at bats, 32 runs, pretty good. Only had two home runs and 22 RBIs and three steals. But his approach was better. Walk rate 15.8% and strikeout rate was 21.9. So that could be a hint of him being better this year. His hard hit rate for the year was kind of an unattractive 33%. So there's hints of improvement. But will Toronto bring in another third baseman? Is he a platoon guy? Um, more of a, a name just to <coughs> follow. But you know, you know, not the not the type of player you want to be drafting to be a starting player in, in the fantasy market. Um, so next up, Danny Jansen. This guy is uh, oh, Danny Jansen. Sorry, I missed. Oh, there he is. I'm already put it to him. So uh, he is um, he is a tremendous fly ball hitter, and his his con his average hit rate has been you know two one one point nine eight and two point oh eight the last three seasons that really kind of says that he if he could get 500 at bats he'd hit 30 home runs and especially when you're adding in it and adding in his um uh his fly ball rate last year was 52.4 percent um and it's increased for three straight years um but his home run fly ball rate last year was 15.7 so on the downside his contact batting average has been consistently under 300 so he has his batting average has really minimal upside because so many of his fly balls end up being easy outs. And he really is a player that doesn't strike out a lot. 
Um, he has a pretty good approach. Um, don't, nah, I'm sorry, I'm just skimming, skimming for find, find, find that number. But, um, but overall, um, injuries have been a problem the last couple of seasons. Um, he missed, uh, last year he missed, um, some time in May with a groin injury, a forearm injury in July, a wrist injury in August, and a broken finger in September. End of the season. The year before, um, he had a broken finger. He missed six weeks. Um, and he, he started the year with an oblique injury. So the last two years, he's given up a lot of at-bats, um, you know, due to uh, injuries. Uh, two years ago, he, he really was not – he was kind of worthless for, for the um, – uh, from the beginning of the June – to the end of August, he only hit 190 with 13 runs, five home runs, and 21 RBIs. So it, it's just a, a, he was a tough player to, uh, to time. Um, last year, you know, he did get the 17 home runs, career high, and the you know he had a career high in RBIs and RBI rate. The last two years, 19 and 20 percent, pretty impressive number. But he comes to the plate, the low RBI chances because of his number of bats. So overall, um, his his exit velocity, launch angle, um, and barrel rate and hard hit rate all pulled back last year a little bit. He still has a really good launch angle, obviously, because the fly ball is 19.7. Um, his, but his hard hit rate last last year was 37.4 compared to 46.6. So, so he's probably hitting a lot of e, uh, you know high fly balls that were easy outs. So, uh, so, could he get 350 at bats? Sure. Could he be better uh, and push higher? A lot higher if he got a lot more at bats, yes. But there is two catchers on Toronto, and one of them isn't going to be a you know a, a full time DH. I don't. And they, Toronto definitely has to get a better better bat in the starting lineup. So his ADP is 247, 20th catcher. Um, you know, I, I if he if he could get 400 bats, hit higher in the lineup, 70, 25 home runs, 75 RBIs, well worth, within reach. Um, but he still, like I said, he has the injury risk. Um, Kevin Kermeyer, not really much to say about him. You know, he's he's a defensive player um, that's really never had unexpiring average hit rate. His contact batting average isn't a difference maker. Um, speed, speed isn't enough. He hasn't hit over 10 home runs or had over 400 bats the last four seasons. So, And his RBIs tend to be low. Hits at the bottom of the lineup. In, has multiple injuries. So not a player that you want to chase around in the fantasy market. So I don't want to invest too much time in him. Um, Isaiah kind of Falafa um, really had a breakout season in 2021 for Texas um, due to, he had due to a bat. They gave him 635 that year. So he 74 runs, eight home runs, 53 RBI stole, stole 20 bases, really kind of a guy that's kind of more geared towards his glove over the last two, two years of the Yankees, unimpressive 253 over 809 at bats. 105 runs, 10 homers, 85 RBIs, 36 steals. So he's like, to me, he's like a below average replacement player. Um, if he's running, you can get him in the lineup. If he's not, um, he can't. Um, strikeout rate's okay, um, but then his walk rate's just below league average. So, um, but he did hard hit rate did go up a little bit. But just another guy, you know, just a probably a guy that can compete from time at third base unless. Toronto find somebody or they detour to or Elvis Martinez. So this is the guy kind of a move slower through the system for the Blue Jays than expected. Uh, pretty talented uh, player. The Blue Jays signed him in 2018 at age 16 for three and a half million dollar contract uh, for four years in the minors. He hit 239 with 213 runs, 93 home runs, 289 RBIs and 14 steals over 1,418 at-bats. His average hit rate has consistently been over 2.0, oh, giving him a high floor and home run. He shows the ability to take a walk, a 9.8% on wide, clean, cleaning up his um, strikeout rate. But when I think of him, I really actually think a lot of Austin Riley of the Braves. Um, kind of both players could hit the ball really, really hard. and um, um, But Martinez is 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 – behind um well behind him in his development uh and but you know 28 home runs 30 home runs 28 home runs over the last three years um and he really has hasn't had over 450 at bats so his rbis and runs have been pretty good um 
what he needs to do is be a little better at at um, controlling the strike zone and not get himself out chasing pitches. And uh, but the power is real. Um, he's going to hit for a little bit early in his career. He's going to have batting average risk, but he's you know he's 22 years old. Um, he has 209 at bats of experience at AAA. Toronto really needs a third baseman. Um, it's just a matter of can he handle major league pitching, and he would be an upgrade to their lineup for sure, at least power and explosiveness. Um, but we'll see how he uh, how he develops and if he does get an opportunity. Um, but he's a player of interest, and maybe it's not this year, but the following year. The last player is more of a bridge player and more of a fill-in due to lack of um, depth. Spencer uh, Horowitz. Um, Another like late round draft at 24th rounder in 2019. Hit 303 for his minor league career over 1448 uh, at bats. Only hit 38 home runs with, you know, probably not impactful RBIs and runs, but he stole 25 uh, bases. Walk rate's pretty good, 40, 14 point due. Doesn't strike out that much, 15.3. Um, hit over the last two years at AAA, he hit 309. Over 563 at bats, 92 runs, 12 homers, 84 RBIs, 13 steals. So it's a competitive bat, but it's not ideal because of the home run. So um, they called him up last year, Toronto, a little bit of time in June, and they called him up in September, hit 256, one home run, seven R RBIs over 39 at bats. So nothing um, stands out there. Uh, he can complete, compete for time at DH or O field. He's a, you know, has first, he's a listed as first baseman here, but not a guy that's going to be a difference maker for sure. Um, but, uh, and his fly ball rates, you know, tends to be low. Um, over the last two seasons at AAA, 5.4 and 9.3. So you don't, the power is not going to take off. He's 26 years old coming into the year, um, possibly a plume, platoon player. So, uh, you know, it's just, you know, a low ceiling, but more of a filler right now. Uh, like I said, until Toronto adds somebody. So the, overall, I just, the, the lineup is for me, for Toronto, like when you're thinking they got to be competitive in the AL East, it just is, just doesn't have the depth. I mean, the catchers are fine. The top three hitters are fine. And I think Farsha is fine. But so they have, you know, will those other three spots, can they improve on them? And Kermaya will help in the glove. I guess you can get away with it. So I think they really need two bats, a third baseman and uh, potentially um, somebody else to cover DH and improve that a little bit. And maybe some, you know, that DH person can be hit in the middle of the lineup. So I expect them to sign somebody. Um, but for now, I don't consider them, you know, one of the top teams in their division for scoring, but there is potential, especially for their, you know, Bo Bichette and Vlad Guerrero to reach a higher ceiling.